Hello, everyone. This is Outnumbered. I'm Kaylee McEnany, and we begin with the new contender in the Republican presidential field. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, well, he is gearing up to launch his long-awaited presidential bid in just hours, 6 p.m. to be exact. His wife, Casey, posting a new and stirring campaign video ahead of the official announcement, saying that the battle for America is worth fighting. They call it faith because in the face of darkness, you can see that brighter future. A faith that our best days lay ahead of us. Well, DeSantis is expected to unveil his 2024 campaign during a Twitter live event at 6 p.m. Eastern with Elon Musk. He will sit down with the Twitter owner. But the decision to speak with Musk has the media up in arms. Vanity Fair, they're out with this headline. It's hard to even believe. Ron DeSantis will formally announce his 2024 bid with Elon Musk because apparently, get this, David Duke was not available. Stunning to read. Uh, and now with me is our panel. Joining me is my co-host Emily Campagno and Harris Faulkner. Also joining us is host of Kennedy on Fox Business, Kennedy, and Washington Times opinion editor and Fox News contributor, Charlie Hurt. Let's start with that headline. <laughs> about David Duke. I mean, they, they tried this with Trump. They're now trying it with DeSantis. Harris, I just want to take off some bills that people may not know that hmm. Governor DeSantis signed into law. Take a look at this. We'll pull them up. First, there was HB7, which required the teaching of slavery and racial oppression and segregation. But in addition to that, we have, again, Governor DeSantis signed these, HB1213, which required including the Okoy Election Day Massacre as part of African American history, um, HB551, that's enacting stronger reporting requirements to make sure people are teaching mm -hmm. African American history, 1441 requires the building of a Florida Museum of Black History, and then there's one that enhances Florida's anti-discrimination laws, and that's before we even get to how well the black community is doing in Florida economically and beyond. Yeah. Yeah, and recently Florida rejected the uh, the College Board's new AP class in African Studies, and that's where you saw the fight coming abroad. But when you look at that list, this is a fight for politics' sake. Right. I mean, look at what the governor has accomplished in all of this, and a lot of what he's pushed against has to do with age appropriateness. By the way, I mean, who are you teaching this to, and and do you have parents on board, so on and so forth? That's why the nation, by the way, knows who he is. Mm -hmm. And so when he gets in a little bit later, no, he won't have the name recognition that a former president had. But when you look at the other six in that group of seven, when he joins later today, it will be interesting. So what's the problem for the left? Well, you've got to start to take him out early. And race is their favorite game. Yep. They went after Senator Tim Scott yesterday within seconds. You saw what co-host of The View, Joy Behar, was saying, oh, he's this, he's that. He doesn't know what it means to be a real black man in America. <laughs> like she would have a clue. Right. Um, but this is, where, this is the fallback. So you see people coming, and, and you're going to take them out on that, on that list of things, that, the, the tropes and the things that you know that will get people going uh, in your party. I tell you, if I were Democrat, I'd be really angry right now. I wouldn't want to be represented by the Joy Behars of the world. No, I wouldn't either. Um, Charlie, it's amazing what they try to do, but you laugh, as I do, because yeah. it's so patently ridiculous. Getting to tonight, big announcement. Senior official on the DeSantis campaign tells me that the message will include things like, things are upside down in America, sanity is in short supply, common sense has become an uncommon virtue, truth is under assault, but decline is a choice and success is attainable. That's pretty powerful. Yeah, and he's got a great, uh, he's got a great message. Uh, Ron DeSantis has a great um, record to point to, uh, to, to run on. Uh, I think it's gonna be a very exciting fight between, uh, in particular, between him and, and Donald Trump. Um, the, and, and, you know, obviously, the, the, once the campaign gets into sort of full swing, I think we'll get a much better sense of uh, how things are going to go. I, you know, I, I always say this, polling at this point is utterly ridiculous. Uh, there's no, they, the polls mean absolutely nothing at this point. Um, and, uh, yeah. but it is sort of interesting, you know, he has been running, he has been sort of trying to, to, to make his pitch to the American people and, uh, his poll numbers, he's been to Iowa, been, he's been yeah, to and his poll numbers have not, 
uh, have gone in the wrong direction. So, you know, as well, uh, you know, as much as he has a tremendous record to point point to back in Florida, he is extremely popular in Florida. And when you talk to people in Florida, they will tell you that that the reason they love him is because he has done something that improved their lives in a very material, personal way. And so his challenge is going to be taking that enthusiasm and conveying that to Iowa or New Hampshire, all across the country, and to convince regular voters who haven't benefited from his policies in Florida of that. And, uh, and if this election kind of comes down to, as I think it will, more uh, about who's the best fighter, and, and Ron DeSantis has a good argument. But Donald Trump has a, a, a great argument on who's a great fighter as well. And so I think that um, I, I, it's going to be a very interesting next couple of months. And I think, I think that, you know, we, we will have a, a much better sense of that. Yeah, I, and going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Donald Trump on a debate stage. No easy task. Oh, yeah. uh, that is a man who knows how to debate and get attention and get his message through, Emily. Um, but looking at this, this is Matt walking. This is with the DeSantis Super PAC. Here's what he said. In the hours before his presidential campaign begins, uh, Ron DeSantis is being attacked by Disney, ACLU, NAACP, Hillary Clinton, the DNC, Joe Biden, American Bridge. It seems like the Democrats are pretty scared. This is where they're putting their fire. It seems so. And to sort of collate what the two of you were saying about the messaging, I think that's why it's a fundamental import that the messaging stays consistent and clear because normal regular voters, I'm not talking about the liberal woke left that is beholden to that amplifying apologist media for the woke left mob or those that are firmly to the right no matter what DeSantis camp, they need to hear loud and clear how he has materially improved those Floridians lives, how he has uh, garnered the public education, the school vote, the parents that are involved, why infant mor or maternal mortality rates are so low, why employment rates are so high and the like. The list goes on, frankly, at how Florida leads the nation in a lot of positive areas that Americans value. So if they are surrounded by the noise that keeps coming out, for example, we just saw the Atlantic Vanity Fair likening him to David Duke, associating Twitter as this ripe cesspool for hate speech. And as Twitchy points out, you know, it's the loss of power that they resent. And I loved the line, Twitter demonstrated exactly why free speech is a threat to this type of manic mudslinging. It's because they're mad they can't can accuse conservatives of being hate-filled bigots without being factually checked, factually checked by third parties. So I think the reality for those that have these sort of, um, you know, analytical minds or at least open minds will see quite clearly, here's the message and which one resonates with me. But the flurry, to your point, Kaylee, the flurry coming out of the woke left and this administration to me represents the hive of bees after they've been poked by the stick. And now we're sitting back enjoying them freaking out essentially, but the whole key is to remain consistent with messaging so that none of that dirt, none of that pig pen, pig sty obfuscates that clear message coming out of these candidates. I think that's exactly right. And Kennedy, how do you break through with like, I learned some new facts today as I'm studying the state of Florida. In quarter one, earnings for the black population in Florida were up 22.5% since the governor took office. Um, again, for the black community, Florida has the most black owned businesses of any state in the nation, more than California, more than New York. How do you break through with this kind of message in light of the racist attacks that we see are being pointed at him? People aren't dumb. And, and people aren't going to be led to vote because of propaganda that they're being fed where someone assumes that they have to vote a certain way because of the color of their skin. And, and people want economic prosperity. It doesn't matter where you're from, where you live, what the makeup of your family is. You want to know that there is a prosperous future for you. And that's what he has to run on. He has to run on the economic success uh, that he has created and cultivated in Florida because that is very much unlike places like California. They're running a deficit. They've got a, a massive number of people who are leaving the state for the first time in decades in California. They see a net loss of population. You're not seeing that in Florida. 12%, and I learned this from Jonathan Honig on my show on Fox Business last night, 12% of all business applications are being filed in Florida. Wow. The, the black unemployment rate in Florida is only 3.9%. So he has to solve the Disney stuff, maybe let the culture war stuff take a back seat and run on the economic message because those independent voters that you touched on that aren't in either camp right now, they are most worried about the economy. Yes, well, 2024 is upon us. How exciting. And be sure to tune in to Fox News tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Governor Ron DeSantis will give his first television interview to our own Trey Gowdy following his big announcement. You do not want to miss it.
Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.